Hi, I'm Daryl. Thanks for dropping by and welcome to my channel Kiwi Adventurer. Kiwi Adventurer is about motorcycle travel, camping and adventure in New Zealand. So if you want to know more, why don't you join me and come for a ride. Check it out. I have just ridden 33 kilometres from Lumsden through Mosman to this point. Centre Hill Road, exactly what I'm after. Laura Lakes, 41k. Right. Now for another 90 kilometres of the unknown to Lake Mavora and Walter Peak Station. It didn't take long for us to get onto Shingle, the gravel roads. My valued viewers, I must apologise for the low horizon my camera is showing. Unknown to me, the mount on my helmet shifted. I'm damn sure nobody wants to look at a tank bag all day. Oh yeah. The peak, 69 kilometres. 23. Hmm. It's funny to see how things work out. On Saturday it was absolutely immaculate weather and then it turned to crap on the Sunday which was the day I chose to have a rest day and then uh, today amongst a horror weather forecast I'm getting this so talk about lucky. we got oh yeah two kilometers the lakes Mount Nicholas Road oh so cool we'll check that out later oh mate beautiful The silence is deafening. Yeah, I'm happier around beech forest for some reason, as against poda carp. Although poda carp and the type of forest I was in in the uh, Fiordland jet boat ride, uh, you know, it's unbeatable, but I just get a really nice feeling in beech forest. It's probably because I've hunted it a lot got a nice smell and you can see a little bit through it. Anyway, uh, we're going to go up the end of the lake, uh, probably only a few k. If from memory, we only get up there about up to the start of the uh, second one or the end of the first one, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's not far. And then after that, we'll come back out to a couple of k's out to the road again one that leads up to Lake Wakatipu and hopefully we'll get through it. Uh, if there's some fords and there's some, I'm not fussy on going through fords in this mother, it's hit a rock. No, we've got too much gear on here to lay it in the river so we'll, we'll check it out anyway. The three kilometre ride past South Mabora Lake through the beech forest is impressive, especially when the sun chose to spread its golden rays through the canopy. I couldn't help notice the ferns and lichens lining the road's edge. This is a place that caters for the lover of the outdoors. Tramping, camping, hunting and fishing go hand in hand, and the family can enjoy the short walks, long walks and mountain biking. 
All those words paint pictures which excite the heck out of me. Hey. Morning. How you doing? Yeah, fine. Where are you heading? Huh? Where are you heading? Um, it's, a, it's a hut here, Kiwi Burn Hut. It's halfway oh. to TNO. Oh, yeah, you've done some walking then, haven't you? Oh, no. Oh, I come from, from Cape Ranga. The north to south Tierra walking track joining Cape Reinga and Bluff travels this road, and areas of this park were used as a filming location for scenes in the Lord of the Rings movie. How about that? Oh, that's a cold wind. The temperature's dropped down to 11 degrees again. Oh, well. I bet there's a lot of people here in summertime. Well, it is summertime, it's, it's still January. Yep, it's January, believe it or not. January 2021, the year I'll remember. As it often does, curiosity got the best of me. I checked out the four-wheel track up the 11-kilometre long North Mabora Lake. I had no intention riding to the top of the lake and turned around and headed back out to continue my ride to Walter Peak Station. I'm excited. <laughs> After that lot and then more to go, it's just awesome. It's a long way in. There's a very famous mountain bike track that goes right around this mountain. I don't know, it's probably a five or six day trip. I haven't researched it. But those are the facilities for people. Not bad. We are about to cross the headwaters of the Ariti River. I didn't realise how long this river is. It starts high up in the mountains close to the Mabora Lake, then flows a massive 170 kilometres running past Lumsden, Winton and in the cargo then flows into Fobo Strait at the southeastern end of Ariti Beach, where a Bert Munro race is held. You might like to check out what the fords are like if you come through here at some stage. There's a few simple fords to be crossed. Could be impassable in heavy rain though, but gives you an idea what's waiting for you. Forward looked all right, okay. Same as the other, but just longer. I'm so lucky the clouds aren't down over the mountains.
What a glorious spot. Imagine a hot summer's day. Like only two days ago. <laughs> I forgot what summer looks like. Oh, it's 12 degrees now. This old original cookhouse, I believe, has over 150 years of country farming history and was originally part of a 13-room homestead. It raises the question, what happened to the homestead? I'm intrigued how they built this building. Fireplace, wow, two meters wide. Hello. Hello. How are you going, team? Yeah. Oh, what an arrangement. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah. So, are you enjoying the trip? Yeah, yeah. We started in Picton. Picton? Oh, well done. Yeah. Paul, the guy with the bike and son Adam, has published books about all the places and trips to ride a mountain bike throughout New Zealand. It was an interesting conversation. <laughs> Yes, it could have been like that all the way in here. I'm so lucky. There's way too much history to document in this short sketch. Suffice to say, the Mackenzie family took over Walter Peak in the 1880s and was responsible for building the homestead and the wonderful gardens. In its prime, the station covered more than 170,000 acres, ran 40,000 sheep and employed 50 staff. Well, this is the end of the road. What a prize. It was worth every bit of it. It wasn't until 2013 when Walter Peak Station was able to plan for its long-term future. They began clearing 155 hectares of the invasive wilding pine. Thousands of native plants and trees were put back in and is ongoing. Now it's a highly efficient, well-oiled tourist destination.
109-year-old T.S. Ernst law is only one of its kind left in the southern hemisphere, still in original condition. The coal-fired steamship serves as a wonderful reminder of a bygone era and a connection to Queenstown's pioneering past. It uses one tonne of coal every hour and travels 1.5 times the circumference of the earth each year. I reckon that's pretty amazing. Yep, I'm pretty pleased with the day's work and it was a bonus getting the earth law coming in. So, pictures speak a thousand words. I'm not going to say anything. I hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, <laughs> you know what to do. So don't forget and keep an eye out for my next one. I don't know what I'm going to do this time. It'll be interesting, be assured of that. Catch you later.